Hi again. We're going to look at the portability of Python, meaning that you can write your code on a Mac and it'll run immediately without changing anything on Windows and vice versa and other operating systems. Anything that runs Python, then your code will work on without having a porting effort at all. As long as you know about the OS library. So we'll be studying that. Here is the crux of the matter. If I import OS on my Linux and my Mac and I ask for os.linesep, I get the backslash n. Or OSSEP, that's a path separator on these operating systems. If I do it on Windows, I get the answer for Windows. So that's the point. If I do a dir on OS and then a help, here are some of the things that are there. And you can see they are just like the operating system of Linux. These are the same calls. So that's where you look for that. You'd rather do it inside your program because that's faster than spawning another task or making a system call. Both of these things we will learn to do, but this is best when you can. Extra interesting is that when you import OS, you get a sub-library for free. You get another library, os.path, within the OS library. If I do a dir on it, I see there are a lot of interesting, useful things. Interesting, maybe, is get m time. That gives me the last modification time of a file that I name, etc. We see there is a join and a split. And the nice thing about this join and this split is that it is aware of what operating system it's being run upon. So it knows what kind of slash should be there on the path. Here we'll look at join and split. I import my OS and I ask OS get current working directory. That's what it means. It's a Unix call usually. And I'll put that answer in where am I and look at it. And there I am. Now then, I'm going to do the OS path split. I don't have to give the slash. And I look at the parts. And I see I only get two. I get the last piece as the last element in my little, little tuple. And all the rest of the path there. So if I wanted all the pieces, I'd have to go round and round, wouldn't I? But that's unusual that you want that. OK, I am going to join with my OS path join parts of 0, that's this, with my double dot that looks like that. That double dot means the parent directory. So this is another way to write that MM3 directory. To do something useful and powerful, we'll take a look at the OS walk. Here is some of the help. We'll trust that it's there and good. We'll just, we'll just look at an example. When you do an OS walk, you name a directory. So we have a cats directory here in this portable Python lab. And you do it in a for loop. What's going to come back to you is tuple after tuple. Each one is going to be in a different directory. These will be a list of the directory names in that directory. And then all the file names that are also in that directory. The first tuple that comes back, this di directory will indeed be the cat's directory. The second time, the first directory that was on the list of directory names will be this directory. It will recurse or travel or walk through the whole directory structure from cats on. So then you have all these. And you do whatever is useful for your project. Here I'm doing something totally useless. I'm passing these three things into my process call. And in my process call, I'm just going to pump some of that OS path stuff so you get the idea of what valuable 
facilities you have there. First, I'm reporting the visitor this time. I am going to add the dear names to the file names. They're each lists, so I can do that. And now I have a bigger list, and I'll sort them up. Now, doing this is unusual. Usually, you only care about the file names. You don't care about the directory names. The directory names is more useful for controlling the order of visitation. You'll read the help carefully if you need to do that. But I'm adding them together and sorting them up, and I'm calling them node name because I don't know if it's a file or directory. I'm making a whole path here on line 11 where I join up this directory with that node name that came back from the walk. This is the line, if you have trouble with the exercise, this is the line you forgot to do. Okay, and now I can ask OS path is there if that whole name is a directory. If so, I say so. Otherwise, it's a file, and I say so. When it's a file, I'm going to use a time library. We haven't done that before. The time library has a C time, which gives you that very Unix-like time output, a string. But you have to feed into it a timestamp, which is the number of seconds since Unix was born. And OS path get m time of a path of a whole name gives us that timestamp. So this tells us the last time it was modified. You have a few exercises. I'll see you when you've done them.